about how long? It's going to be forever. I'm going to keep it. Keep for, no, I like to do these about 30 minutes, 45 minutes Perfect. max. I mean, unless you enjoy talking to me, which which that, that makes me feel happy. Um, <laughs> but we're actually live right now. Hello, everybody. What's going on? Uh, it's Chris from the Charity Board Gamer. And I have Jade from the House of Afros, Capes, and Curls. I love saying that. Or, or it's also known as H-O-A-C-C. If, well, uh, if you're on Twitter, underscore H-O-A-C-C, -C, is that right? That's okay. correct. Okay. Awesome. Um, so we're going to be talking tonight just uh, a little bit about uh, Jade. We're going to be talking about AfroCon. We're going to talk about the House of Afros, Capes, and Curls. And uh, if you have questions as we're actually talking tonight, please put them in the comments down below. Um, if I'm correct, I think I've got a link to... Uh, the House of Afros, Capes, and Curls actually in the description. So if you're interested, you want to support the cause and what they're doing, uh, which is very much about inclusivity and making it a safe and respectful environment for for uh, for all people, especially uh, people of color. Uh, that is something that you can go ahead, click that Donate Now button on their page and make a difference. So, Jade, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Pleasure to have, pleasure to be here. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us, tell us kind of, you know, uh, what, what kind of, what kind of games or, or, or science fiction or any, any uh, nerd culture that, that you kind of got into that got you really excited growing up. Cause I mean, I see an amazing thing from black Panther in, in the background already. Um, oh yeah. I've got wonder woman back there too. Um, mm -hmm. Zoe from Fireflies behind me. Nice. Um, I am a nerd. <laughs> uh, I have Darth Vader in my closet from childhood. It's a porcelain bank uh, that I've had since I was probably seven or eight years old. Uh, so I've been at this for a while. Um, I love science fiction. I love fantasy. I don't consider myself a hardcore gamer because I really just like to farm things. Uh, <laughs> and I don't like raids because I'm not that good. I don't like high pressure situations when I'm at play. Mm -hmm. um, board games, I grew up loving and wanting everything and not having a not having enough as far as I was concerned and and strove to change that as I got older for uh, the kids that were in my life because I'm a teacher. Uh, so I've always had games and that's always been a part of everything that I really do and have done. Um, uh, so anything and everything, sci-fi, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, Star Trek, Star Wars, all of that. All right. F favorite Star Trek. Which 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 series? Um, I uh, I'm partial to Next Gen. Okay, okay. But I still love TOS. All right. Yeah. I, I'm a Next Gen fan myself, so okay. uh, I mean, I, I love I love the relationship between Data and Picard. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like a nice father son type bond throughout the whole series. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah. yeah. So, w tell us about Heroes of Afros, Capes, and Curls. I love the name. Um, you you've got a great vision. I put the vision in the description, but I, I'd love to hear it from you. How did this get started? Um, what brought this about? So, the mission of the House of Afros, Capes, and Curls is. Um, to connect people of diverse backgrounds and build a community based on a shared love and interest in science fiction, fantasy, gaming, and Afrofuturism, while providing a safe space to explore the artistic and literary and historic merits of geek culture. I wanted to have one conversation about Game of Thrones and not 10. <laughs> I found myself having to manage all of these people that would text me through Game of Thrones and whatever it was that I was watching and having all these separate conversations with people. I wanted everyone in the room together. What I 
discovered was a lot of my friends that were um, African American or African or Latino were not really out of the geek closet. <laughs> I knew that they were a nerd, but not everyone else did. So I wanted to get everyone in the room to have conversation because I'd say, well, you love this and she loves that and you all should know each other. And that's really how it started was having game nights and opportunities for my friends to just gather. And then of course they told their friends and they told their friends and it got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Um, our first major event was in February, 2018. And at that point we were just a social group. Um, that was the Black Panther premiere. We had this idea, uh, and I said, what if we had a Black program for the premiere of Black Panther? And my friends were like, we're gonna do that. And I said, how are we gonna do that? <laughs> how are we gonna do that? Um, partnered with Alamo Draft House. They gave us their largest theme that, has, that actually had a speech set. And we had a Black history program before the premiere of Black Panther sold it out two days, had two after parties with DJs. One DJ, Crown Red Clifton, came in from New York. Um, and from there, it just became, okay, now what's the next thing? And it morphed into something even larger than I thought that it would be. From those events and more game nights, uh, we became a, an official nonprofit with a 501c3. Um, we have AfroCon that happens. It happened in July of last year. And that was sort of the big, the big goal, the big picture that I thought would have been five, 10 years down the road, but it happened last year and we're gonna do it again this year, virtually, 10, 10, 2020. So it Let me write that date down, 10, 10, 2020. 10, 10, 2020. Um, so it, it was something very small with just people that I knew, but then I discovered this is, this is a space that is lacking and void in my community and obviously I'm not the only one that felt it. So it has just become much larger and we are very excited to have so many people come to all of our events. What were, um, what were, what are some of the things that you noticed going to other conventions that you, that you, that you noticed for, for people of color? I, I know I, talking to Mick, Mick said uh, that some of those experiences just felt like awkward or, or, or not, not comfortable. Right. Um, what, what, what were some of the experiences and, and how did you change that in your own convention um, in the way that, that people were approached and treated? Um, it's interesting. I am, well, I'm black and I've always been black, but I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I am comfortable moving in spaces where I am the only one. And that's sort of been the expectation for me growing up, loving geek culture, knowing that I'm probably gonna be the only one in that comic book store. Um, and that, what I realized was, even though I have that level of comfort in going to those spaces or going to the Renaissance Fair or going to the anime conventions and, ex and just having that expectation that I'm gonna be the only one, not everyone of color has that same level of comfort. So I wanted a space where people could connect and go to these things together in groups or feel like they could be, would be in a safe, a safe environment, even if it was just a bubble of their own. But I, I understand walking into spaces and feeling like, okay, I know I'm the only person here. I'm gonna have to step outside of my comfort because it is uncomfortable to be in some of those spaces to, in, to find the joy that I know that I am looking for, but I have to look for it. And it's not always welcoming. Um, I've been to many conventions where I was looked at and 
know that I don't have a costume. I'm the one not in a costume, but people are looking at me and just unfortunately learn to live with that. And that's not okay. So in what we did for AfroCon was made sure that we talked to lots of different people in the community. Uh, we talked to cosplayers. We talked to people that had never been to a convention. We talked to people that had been to a convention to make sure that everything that we did, we made everyone that walked through the door feel like they were in the place where they were supposed to be and that they were valued and whatever they needed or anything that they wanted to see. If, if we didn't have it this year, we wanted to make sure what is it that you want to see so that we get everything that people have always wanted to see in a convention environment. Very cool. Um, now, one of the words that, that you've used earlier was astrofuturism. Now, I, I don't know that definition or, or what that means. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to me? Because I'd like to I'd like to learn. So Afrofuturism is looking at people of African descent and putting them in the center of a story or a narrative that takes place in the future. Literally putting black bodies and black stories in the future. Um, and that is a fairly the term is becoming more widely used and people are hearing it more often now, but it's it's being applied to things that are not new at all. Um, Parliament and the Funkadelics, um, George Clinton, you, you've heard of those people. Yep. The mothership, uh, anytime that there is a story where African people are at the center of the story, because that's not always the case, when we look at the future or futuristic stories, period, um, that's what Afrofuturism is doing. It also marries history with that future. So there's always a connection with a past and a future for African people being seen at the center of a story. Now, uh, another question I'd like to ask, um, you, you talked about your experiences and how you felt and not not every city has like an AfroCon or or something of that nature that's that that um, that that could be better. There's a lot of places that could be better. What are things that you would suggest to people going to cons, um, just in the way of how they approach one another, uh, especially in situations like where you said how everybody just kind of stared stared at you even though you're not wearing any cosplay or costumes or anything like that, what is something that, that you would suggest to just anybody uh, in, in the way that they're, they're approaching? I mean, we know that there's, there's, there shouldn't be these issues between whites, blacks, Asians, or anything of that nature. There should not be that, that um, the way that people treat each other. It shouldn't be that way. There shouldn't be racism at all. Right. There is, which mm -hmm. is sad. But what is something that we can do to encourage and make sure that people feel included? Um, what are some suggestions that you would have uh, for, for people uh, that are going to a con? Uh, just just anything. Because, uh, I mean, that's that's something that, you know, just from interactions, um, I, I, I would like to know of ways that I, even myself, how I can make sure that, you know, you know, just even if it be just the way I talk, the way I act, something where I can make sure that somebody feels included. Um, I think that's a big thing that, that we need to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. Just Absolutely. not just, of course, not just, of course, in board games or conventions, but just in just our general demeanor with each other. So. Um, right. Um, I think that the most important thing is to see people as human and having a human experience. And therefore, if it's a convention or anything, anything that really related to, to geekdom, it's for leisure, it's an outlet and it's escape. And the last thing that people want um, when they are trying to escape and relax 
is to have to deal with all of the other issues that come with being in the world. But that's the reality of where we are. But seeing people as human, having a human experience and loving something and being passionate about it is probably the most important thing. I walked into those spaces and I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be there. I didn't want to be treated any differently. I didn't want any special treatment at all. I just wanted to be and be free to enjoy all of the things that I came there for. So that's the most important thing. Thank you for sharing that. I hope that people are watching can can do that. I, I really do. I look forward to a day where we don't have to have these discussions like this because it's it's sad. It's it's very sad. But let's talk nerd culture now because let's have some fun. Okay. All right. So favorite superhero. Oh, um, honestly, um, I'm going to say Misty Knight. Okay. All right. From uh, from Luke Cage. Uh, what was yeah. it Misty Knight then fought with, I forget, what's her name? Um, uh, from Iron Fist. They were the daughters of... Yeah. And I can't think of her name right now. Co oh, Col Colleen? Colleen Wing. Yes, thank Colleen you. Wing, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to say Misty because she was the person. Oh, man. But then I. Oh, Storm. Okay, Storm. Okay. <laughs> A true. Now, the one thing I liked was remember when they had the X Men Gold and the X Men Blue? And she was the leader of one of the, one right. of the teams, right? Yes. Yeah. That's um, cool. And both of them for much the same reason. As I'm going into those comic book stores, they are the people that look like me. And that's why I'm drawn to that because if I don't know anything else, people will go to the thing that looks the closest to them or that they have a relationship with. So that's why Storm and then Misty. I like it. I like it. Yeah, Storm, Storm's always been a character that I've enjoyed in the comics. Um, I liked when her and Black Panther were married. I was very upset though when the Avengers versus X Men storyline happened, uh -huh. where they were fighting for hope, and then uh, was it because of that their relationship ended during the fight? Basically, yeah, yeah. that was that was pretty rough. Yeah. I, I am I am hoping that the MCU will bring Storm in as a leader of the X Men. And maybe there was talks about maybe having her in a, the next Black Panther. So uh, yes, there's been a lot of talk about her in the next Black Panther and who that might be, which is a little controversial. <laughs> who who would they say it's going to be? I, I haven't heard. Um, well, it's not they said, but there were there was talk because there were conversations with Beyonce. Okay. Is she gonna sing? Because if she's gonna sing, I am all for it. Um, I just she can do as many songs on the soundtrack, and that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. that's Acting it. wise, that's it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, I liked the girl that they had who played Storm in um, in the newer series. I thought. Yeah, she did a good, I thought she did a good job with the she, Mohawk Storm. Yeah, I mean that was that was like the '80s version. That was right around right after the new X Men. And new X Men was what the '70s, and she was yeah. in the team. It was her, Wolverine, Colossus, and uh, yeah, she was she was pretty good. There are a couple of people that um, I think would be even more phenomenal i just mm -hmm. hope that they they make the right choice uh, i want to hear your suggestions um yatiti i can't think of her last name uh, but yatiti is on american gods okay i have not watched american gods oh so i might have to put that in yeah she plays watch she plays okay. on american gods mm -hmm. she is Amazing. Yeah. And she wants to play her. 
That's then why don't I see? I don't understand it. Like people well, want to play the roles. And she, had, she wanted to be Storm when she, when she was relatively unknown. She wants to be Storm. That'd be pretty cool. I'm going to have to look that up later. American Gods. I have not, I have heard a lot about that series, but I have not watched. I think that was what, on a Showtime or something? Um, is It may be Stars. I don't remember anything. Okay. Whatever it is, I don't have it because. There's so many services. Yeah. It's like, I'm like Disney Plus, Hulu, uh, I know. Netflix. It's like, okay, uh, I want to watch. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go watch Supernatural now. Okay, Netflix. Um, I want to watch the Marvel Universe, Disney. If I want to watch something that was just on TV, Hulu. I'm, I'm not going to uh, – HBO, all this other stuff. I'm like, no, it's it's too much. And it's too much. And Max. Like, how is that different than just regular HBO? I don't even understand. Well, it was what HBO, HBO Now, then HBO Max, and then people are like, which which one's which? And then they're like, uh, let's just change the streaming services to HBO Max now. And so, yeah, because there was oh, and there was HBO Go. So you yeah. have like four right. different things to try to figure out. Right, right. And I was like, how is it that you're like one of the biggest cable providers? And you can't figure out how to do streaming services. Right. It yeah. blew my mind. It's like, oh, thought they were going to go the way of Blockbuster with that move. Oh. Um, yeah, Blockbuster. I miss those days. Um, yeah. What's what's been uh, out of out of like comic books, video games? What's been something that you've really enjoyed uh, playing a lot lately? I, um. I have not been reading anything in the world of comics lately. Uh, too much work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah, that's a, a lot of work. And I haven't been playing a lot. Um, I got sucked back into The Sims last year. I hadn't okay. played The Sims in over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And happened to see something on YouTube. And I was like, that's what it looks like now? And yeah, I got sucked back into building houses and making long lines of family. So that's when I get a few minutes, that's what I have been doing, but literally just building Georgian style houses. <laughs> I want to see these houses. I'm on, I'm on origin. So I've, I need to, I need to see these sometime. I, I have done little to nothing in the Sims. I realized that I'm like, I don't have the time mm -hmm. to watch these people interact. Yeah. I don't want to click on them either. So like I, I, I downloaded, I think it was like on sale on uh, origins one day and I'm like, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. $4. Right. Right. Wait That's, what I, got. That's yeah. what I got it. Yeah. I mean, it's a great deal. And, but the houses and, and then I'll let you move on, but. Oh no, this is good. I enjoy this. This is good. Cause I do get excited about these houses. So I decided to, to build Georgian style houses and I have two different kinds. I have the manor houses that are very English and I have the Southern homes with the wraparound porches and the columns. And the Southern homes that I have, I have one that is a replica of George Washington's Mount Vernon, including the wallpapers and some of the furniture. That's really cool. I know. I'm a nerd. There is nothing nerdy about that. That's just awesome. That's what that is. I and, like that. And I'm an historian. So, yeah, put all of that together. Uh, favorite. Okay, so history. All right. Favorite period of history. Or favorite. Uh, not, not so much like, hey, I really enjoyed this thing, but something that you really took a lot of interest into um, that, that you thought was important. Oh, that's hard because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. so, um, I am a historian. I teach at a couple of different colleges now, and I also work with high schoolers and middle schoolers um, with social studies and social studies and research development. Um, I do uh, my areas that I have focused on have been um, early. 18th century America, colonial America, um, the Caribbean, 
and Tudor English history. That's that's the forefront. Nice. Me, I uh, I've always found um, studying like I, I did a lot of studying about the Civil War, um, but the in the one that the history that I've recently been studying more of uh, the Holocaust a lot, um, just because I think it's important. Um, I used to, when I was younger, I used to play cello at, at the local synagogue and um, during the memorial times. And so that was, that was, uh, that was important. We've, we've made it a point now as a family to um, observe Hanukkah uh, just to be able to talk. We, we invite people over. We have what we call a Hanukkah party where we invite people over. We, we share the dreidel. We talk about the history behind it. Uh, we're, we're not we're, we're not Jewish, but we, we find the culture to be very beautiful and uh, the history to be very important um, just for a Judeo-Christian uh, background of un understanding things. Um, but there's my wife is uh, Lebanese Armenian. And so the Armenian Holocaust is something that we find very, very interesting. Um, because a lot of people attribute the Armenian Holocaust to what then led Hitler to doing his Holocaust mm. of the Jews. Um, because nobody really flinched with the Armenian Holocaust. Mm. Nobody lifted a finger or anything. So um, historically, uh, you know, a lot of people steer that, well, because that was allowed, Hitler thought, this would be okay then. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I married, I married into my big fat Greek wedding. So <laughs> yeah, I kid you not. Uh, was it, um, yeah, we, I don't know uh, if you ever seen, you've seen the movie, right? My big fat Greek wedding. Yeah. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I married into. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, but we had great leaves at the wedding and we had french fries at the wedding because i needed french fries so so my mother-in-law she made she made these french fries for me but she said you have to eat a grape leaf and i okay. said okay uh, and then my father father-in-law always said that he paid two camels a goat and a lamb it was just kind of one of those you know traditions of of, of paying for for a dowry for for the wife mm -hmm. and um so when i asked for her hand in marriage to her parents I went to Michael's, bought some plastic animals, two camels, a goat, and a lamb. And I sat down in front of them, just just quietly sat down in front of them, and then slowly placed them out on the table. <laughs> my mother's, my mother-in-law died laughing. My father-in-law looked very stern and concerned. So, yeah. so. Very, very cool story. Yeah. But no, for, for history, I think, the Armenian Holocaust has it's been one that that I, I feel like sometimes doesn't get recognized for for its importance in, in history. But yeah, no. And since we're talking about history, mm -hmm. uh, we have two programs with the House of Afro's Capes and Curls now that have to do with history. Um, we have the Young History Detectives, and the Young History Detectives takes kids that are between ten and sixteen and I teach research skills and um, social studies and social studies that I know that they don't necessarily get in school. So African, African-American history told from a very authentic perspective and the kids have, it started off, we, it was supposed to be 50-50 50% of the time we did lecture lesson and a little in work and research. And then the other 50% of the time we play games. The playing of the board games was really to understand the mechanics of gameplay, some socialization, but then also figure out ways to develop a game that we create with the content that we are learning. Because that's also something that's missing in a lot of board games that history piece. So that's what it was supposed to be. Um, we, I quickly discovered that they were so hungry for the knowledge that the games became secondary. Like, oh, okay, well, we'll play next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
That is amazing. Yeah, but they they really wanted to to learn more and to do the research and understand how do I write this paper and how do I do this? Because I have college students that struggle and I'm like, you're not gonna be that. You're 10, you're gonna learn how to cite your sources. You're gonna learn how to do this research right now. So that's the Young History Detectives. And it's, and we're actually in summer sessions now. Um, and we've been able to just transition to doing everything in Zoom and going to Board Game Arena and playing every once in a while when we have some time. Have you, uh, have you used anything like Tabletopia at all either or? I looked at that. Um, mm -hmm. Board Game Arena had Sushi Go, which they were okay. with. And so I went with that because they were already familiar with a couple of those games. So Awesome. Have you reached out to any publishers or anything like that uh, to maybe see about getting some games into the into the House of Astro... Uh, 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 All right, in the House of Afro Escapes and Curls? We have not. Uh, we work with a local game shop here. It's called Game Shop. And um, we take suggestions, but we we are looking to build our library. So we have not done that yet. There is a person and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you after we get done with the interview. Um, but she is known as a board game librarian and she has um, been very helpful to librarians and to different um, people who are, who have uh, 501, uh, three, 501 C3. I always want to say 501 C3 PO, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, but um, she's really awesome in helping out towards that. I'd like to get you her link later after we get on here, because yeah. I would like to connect you to to see if there's some ways that publishers and designers would be willing to maybe help uh, build up your library, especially for for AfroCon uh, and for things like that, because I think that's important. Um, it's it's nice to have those for people to play. Mm -hmm. um, and if people are watching this on my Facebook uh, page or on my Facebook right now, and you're watching this, and I know that some of you are designers or publishers, reach out to Jade, please reach out to Jade, and let's let's make this happen. I'm talking to you, Tony. I'm talking to you, Dan De Lorenzo. I'm talking to all of you uh, over at Bezier. I'm talking to y'all. You want to help out towards something that's really awesome and amazing, and and has. Uh, you know, has Mick and Starla of, of our, our family plays games excited about about? Then uh, please let's let's support Jade. So thank there, you. I'm on. My pleasure. It's yeah. no problem. But uh, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna I think wrap it up. Uh, we're gonna keep talking. I think maybe just a little bit afterwards. But um, you know, I just enjoyed this conversation, and I would love to keep these conversations going even outside of outside of Facebook and outside of uh, Twitch streaming. Um, and tonight we're going to be playing Roar and Write. I don't know if you were able to play tonight. If not, that's cool. But I would love to invite you to come join us. We'll have some fun on Twitch, and we'll play we'll play board games, you know, stuff like that. What are what are some things that you're thinking about doing for the con? Uh, virtu um, because you're going to be doing it virtually, or are you going to or are you trying to figure that out right now? Oh no, we're going to be virtual. Okay. Because just uncertain what's going to be happening in October and would rather just know what we're gonna do. Um, we know that we are gonna to have to be able to play games. So mm -hmm. trying to figure that out. And I work with another organization. Um, it's another. It's a convention here in, in town called MOOCCon and it's a board game convention. And so I know that they are going to virtual as well and we're gonna be going around the same time. So we're kind of sharing information back and forth and they also ran tables for us uh, last year at AfroCon. Um, so I know that between them and Mick and Starla and Marcus Ross, who's a board game designer here in Omaha, we definitely will be having some breakout sessions and rooms available, space available for board game play. Um, we also will have at least two major conversations on the main stage. Uh, one is going to be one, I'm not, I don't exactly know because we're still working on what that would be. But one I do know is the center of the core of it is going to be Star Trek. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be Star Trek and thinking forward because uh, the theme of AfroCon this year is and the future. And okay. 
it was um, pretty equal in the thinking very before. And now as events have happened in the world, more and more thinking about the future. And that's what's really weighing heavy on us to really talk about at AfroCon this year. There'll be other breakout sessions, workshops, conversations, and also a cosplay contest. So we're going to continue to do that virtually. I'm excited to see more of this. Um, and, and of course, we can support you by going to Heroes of Afros, Capes, and Curls. It's H O A C C dot O R G. Is that right? Or is it's, it dot com? I forget. It's Afros, Capes, Curls. Curls. Uh, Okay, and I, I know I put it in the link in the description, but I, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> Afros, Capes, Curls. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, and, and also if you need if you need other people helping out towards uh, running some games, I'd be glad to, to come and help as well, because that, that sounds like fun. Yes. I'm just going to so. say yes. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to say good night. Uh, and uh, of course, Jade, thank you again for being on here. I appreciate the conversation we were able to have. Um, if you are interested, like I said, go to that site, donate, support a good cause. If you're a publisher, designer, uh, or just an all around person that loves board games or wants to help out towards a great cause, uh, please reach out to Jade, reach out to uh, House of Afros Capes Curls. I'm gonna keep saying this over and over again and, uh, and make it a point to make a difference. So, uh, and then remember, October 10th, 2020, AfroCon, uh, which uh, if you are wanting to get involved with that as well, please reach out to her. But Jade, thank you again. Thank you so much for the invitation. My pleasure. Everybody have a great evening. <laughs>